So this uh, Lexar CFast 2.0 card arrived uh, last week, uh, and we need to recover content of the main differences between this type of device over regular traditional compact flashes. Obviously, uh, the interface and the speed that comes with it. Fastest compact flash cards that we see these days are clocking in around 160 megabytes per second. Uh, these cards record much faster. These devices are pretty much SATA interface uh, solid state devices. They usually run a solid state uh, controllers uh, on Lexars, it's silicone motion. Most of the time I've seen it's uh, 2248TX. Let's open up this device and see what it is on the inside. Sorry, did I say 48XT? I meant 46XT. So this is the uh, basic layout. For working with these cards, we do need um, a CFast card adapter. We need to build a virtual translator to uh, gain access to the structured data, to the logical image. Um, the um, data, as uh, some of you may know, is kept on uh, the chips. Four chips right here. This controller communicates with uh, four chips together. The uh, information about translation and how blocks should be arranged within is kept on the NAND chips. If the card stops initializing, but it detects itself in the safe mode, most of the time it would indicate either uh, that there is a, a disconnection between the board and one of the NANDs, Possibly uh, there is a problem with one of the NANDs uh, and so the microcode from the chips can come together in the uh, form that the controller is expecting it to. So in order to uh, do the further troubleshooting, it's best to hook it up to PC3000. We can try to upload a loader to this device and once the loader is uploaded, we can try to build a translator to uh, see if we can gain access to the data. If that does not work, there's also an option to recover data directly from uh, all four of these chips. This corner right here, there are four dots here. Those are called vehicles. Okay, these two that are closer towards the NAND was gonna initiate a safe mode for us. Oh, wait, it's too much zoom. There we go, that's good. So we're gonna put a jumper on there to short them out. Once they're shorted, the drive is gonna, by default, gonna go into safe mode. And by going into safe mode, it will allow uh, PC3000 utility to work with it. With the safe mode engaged, we are not, uh, we're not getting anywhere. The entire registry goes up like a Christmas tree, pretty much every light comes on. That's not what we're looking for. Let's find out why that is. So I'm gonna start with the um, quartz. The power's been tested. Everything seems to be delivered to where it needs to be delivered to. adding flux to, to the surrounding parts of the quartz and just gonna start uh, heating it up so that it uh, gets hot enough to be removed. Once the chip is pulled, those pads, um, I prefer to just clean them up. Let me grab um, a little bit of extra flux and the wick. Pick up all that old solder and uh, put some fresh one on there. This is leaded as well, so it doesn't take as much heat to, uh, to melt. And do the same on the chip side. This will just eliminate uh, any possible cold solder joints or uh, no contact on pads and the board between the quartz and the PCB. That had no effect 
on uh, the situation and we're still getting all the registries acting really 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 weird so this is sm2246 xthaa controller let's peel this off and uh, see what the pads look like same thing here we're gonna add flux heat it up and with tweezers i'm gonna just feel when the solder becomes uh, liquid pull it off usually that we can tell that there's corrosion by looking at the pad that it correlates to if there's solder that's left here that's one thing but when you look at the pads if they're gray like this and they come off with uh, nothing attached to them usually that's a good sign that uh, you may have bad contact so I'm just gonna go ahead and prep everything up here clean it up so in order to uh, do the prep on the chip uh, we want to add flux and we want to retain every single pad so that it's shiny again um, getting rid of that uh, darkened darken kind of uh, oxidation is the goal because that's what prevents a good signal removing old lead free solder as well and with hot tweezers we're just going to pick up the uh, extra stuff to level the board. Look at that. What's happening here is we've removed the uh, controller to uh, get rebold and repositioned. The quartz, I don't know exactly what to swap it out with because there's no markings on it to know exactly what uh, frequency it is. I just tried to lift it up, rebold it just to make sure that all four pads are still attached. That didn't change anything for the device. The grid on it isn't standard. We actually ordered some stencils that will be able to uh, help us do this faster by applying a stencil and uh, soldering paste over the top. Uh, but uh, for now I have to resort to the manual route <laughs> and do this by hand. One ball at a time. So flux it up smear the flux over the surface of the chip not leaving too much and just kind of sprinkle the soldering balls on top uh, it's a little bit of patience required type of procedure but once you do this several times it's really no big deal like this whole thing took me seven minutes to line up so it would take 30 seconds maybe with the stencil to finish but it's not too bad the next thing is uh, very critical is to uh, keep a very low airflow um, and um, make sure that these uh, solder balls don't start floating all over the place because if they do uh, they'll start merging and if they merge you're gonna have to lift them clean them and uh, reball again so monitoring it making sure that they stay in their own place is the key here and we can see right there that this is a problematic spot that we're gonna take care of right now line it back and heat it up again because uh, if we don't you know it's just gonna be asking for more trouble once they're seated initially and the f doesn't look like things are moving anywhere else uh, we can apply m more flux to it and flow it at higher airflow to get it done quicker but that's the end goal it's the end product now we're gonna put it back on the PCB line it up and heat it until the chip starts to float on the surface very freely with a little bit of tension pulling itself back into the center. Uh, right now I'm using 350 uh, temperature at 40 air and you can see it's moving nicely. So that didn't really change much so I'm gonna be testing out why we're not getting safe mode. Is it a controller issue or is it a problem with NANDs? So removing one of the NANDs uh, will by default throw um, the device into a safe mode. And if we're not getting a safe mode in the utility, then the problem most likely is uh, somewhere either on the board or related to the controller. I've removed the first chip 
and uh, utility came up in the safe mode very quickly. So there is a slight suspicion that we may have bad contact on uh, one of the chips. And looking at the back side of the memory components here, Uh, especially this one that I'm cleaning up right now, you can see in the top right there are some pads that don't shine. And if those signals are critical, that could be the reason why our device is not working properly. Uh, if that's the reason why, then we just need to tin them up, clean them up the same way as we did on the controller chip because most likely you know, we should be getting a safe mode and afterwards with all the chips remounted so I'm going to just stencil everything this is my base that I've been using for many years this is the one I told you that I really liked I was able to just get it on Amazon and as you can see all of the uh, pads uh, get even amount of paste uh, without smearing just prep the board a little bit I prefer to clean it before applying um, the chips again. Even though there was some original flux on there, just add a nice thin even coat of flux on the surface and uh, gonna lay both chips down. They don't have to be perfectly centered for this part. I actually prefer to have them uh, slightly off centered because once they get hot enough that uh, the solder begins to melt they will pull themselves into position and that will be a good indication that we should move on to the next chip and not heat the same component for excessive periods of time now it's flowing you can just see how the second part pulled itself in add more flux on this side you can see that the board is still warm so the flux just starts floating up chip one chip two and heat just line up there we go that that's that's good you see it starts pulling itself back in like this that means it's ready and something happened to the jumper I'm gonna just put it back in and this is it we're getting a safe mode you're getting a safe mode going into the utility we're going to pick a Lexar utility so Lexar card and as you can see the card gives us safe mode indicating the controller part number and uh, it lets us in so the loader was uh, uploaded now we can try to build a translator let's go ahead and do that that procedure may take quite a while so I'm gonna put it on fast forward for you once the translator is built, we can start imaging the device in Data Extractor. Uh, we're going to select the utility and not the channel as a source of our project. And as you can see in the top left corner, uh, the credentials for the device came up. It's currently being imaged at about 9 megabytes per second, give or take. It's not the crazy fast speed, but again, uh, this is happening all because of PC3000's ability to uh, build a translator for this device that's as fast as it's gonna go for now but it's running steady and that's what's important so far it's running consistently and doesn't seem to hang up on any spots so I'm expecting a good turnout once the image is completed so if you guys have any questions feel free to post your comments in the section below and if you need help with the memory card recovery the links are in the description how to reach us